Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for our next episode of Mixed Messages with Jeff Bogue. My name is Joe Caruso, and I'll be your host as we dig into today's topic. Well, from news sources to comedians, friends to advertisements, it seems everyone has an idea of how we should think, live, and make decisions. And when everyone disagrees, how can we cut through the noise? How do we sift through all the information overload and choose what actually governs our lives? Well, we've been processing these things, and our leadership is praying for all of us, so we want to offer a resource to navigate some of the day's most pressing topics and questions. Jeff. Joe. How are you, buddy? I'm, I'm on the sleepy side of life, but I'll perk up talking to you, Joe. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I'm going to fall asleep talking to you, so that all works. <laughs> That's my favorite way to listen to this podcast is right when I'm about to fall asleep. Just I, <laughs> I listen to this podcast every night as I'm falling asleep, so I've trained myself that whenever I talk, I doze off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I can, terrible. I can barely make it through my own sermons. That's, <laughs> that's live. <awful. laughs> I mean, listening to yourself is difficult. I'll give you that. It is, because you sound funny to yourself. You totally, yep. You, well, you, you sound completely different in your own head. It's unbelievable how much that is true. Uh, I just also noticed that while I was uh, reading today's intro, that I even reading something, even sitting here still, I can't not move my hands. I'm like that that stereotypical Italian gene that I must use my hands when yeah. talking. Like even this, and <laughs> how do we sift through all the noise? My hands moving back and <laughs> forth. So for those of you listening and not watching on YouTube, what up YouTube? Uh, I, I I move my hands when I, I talk. I realized a, a few years ago how how much I fidget mm-hmm. when um, I was sitting down at our, one of our uh, one of our colleagues' desk and I was talking to her about something, making some kind of plan, and I was mess. She had this basket of toys, and I was just messing around. I go, "What are all these toys for?" And she goes, "They're for you." <laughs> I go, "What?" She goes, "You don't even notice that you always have to play with something on the desk while you're talking." She goes, "I put these here like a year ago, and you you just now thought <laughs> thought oh, about picking amazing. them up, messing around." But oh, it's true. I'm similar, and just that uh, I was just out to lunch today. And I had the straw wrapper, and like I'm like tying it in knots and rolling it up, and I'm yeah. like, "What's my problem?" Like, <laughs> just enjoy conversation. I even liked the lunch I had; it was nice. All right, Jeff. Well, today we have our submitted submitted question, and uh, this comes from someone who was just out of state visiting a friend, and they ended up talking quite a bit about his painful relationship with his father, hmm. and he didn't see the need to do uh, anything healthy because of all the pain that he's endured because of his father. And so after talking with our listener, he expressed that he would like to hear more about forgiving him. And so um, that's what our listener is asking. How does someone um, engage with uh, probably especially a family member or someone that's close to them? They've hurt them. They've done things. It seems unforgivable. And yet, <laughs> we're kind of called to do something about that. Yeah. How do we navigate those uh, relationships? You know, those are very. That's a very tough question. Very difficult situation. And um, the motivation to forgive the unforgivable uh, is different based on whether or not you're a Christ follower or not. Mm. So, if you're not a Christ follower, uh, the motivation is very practical. Um, if you are a Christ follower, the the motivation is very much tied to your ability to be salt and light, mm. and your willingness or or, or uh, embrace of that identity that Jesus gives us. So, um, on the practical side of it, I think what what we have to remember is that my lack of forgiveness of someone else does not affect them. Mm. It only affects me. Paul Paul talks a lot about getting rid of bitterness, anger, slander, brawling, malice. And um, on a very practical slash almost unspiritual side of it, think of the non-Christ follower, um, getting rid of bitterness, anger, slander, um, or forgiving someone frees yourself of another person's poison that they have implanted in you, mm. right? So um, think think of it this way. Think of like somebody, you were healthy, or perhaps you would be all on your own. Somebody comes to you with a, a syringe of poison, and they put that into your veins. There is an antidote 
but you choose not to embrace the antidote, you choose to live with the side effects of the poison. And that's what a lack of forgiveness is. Hmm, that's so we can, what's remarkable about human beings is we can function in our dysfunction. Yep. So we can live a relatively normal life because a lot of times what somebody will say is, they'll say, well, I don't really care. Anyway, I, I decide not to care. Or my dad in this case was toxic and I just cut him out of my life. Well, that's not true. That's denial. Mm. Um, you do care on a bunch of levels. One, you care because um, everybody longs for a relationship with their father. So your father never saying he loves you or that he's proud of you or that he cares for you marks you. It marks you in, a, uh, in an aggressive way that you're angry that your father didn't give those things to you. And then it marks you in a passive way. You have no idea uh, what those kind of communications from a father, how they would actually benefit you and actually move you forward in life. And so it, it does affect you. Uh, when you think about like uh, lack of forgiveness, when I don't forgive somebody, in essence, what I'm doing is I'm not dealing with my past. Mm. So you can say, well, my past is my past and it's in my past. Well, no, it's not. Your past is in your past and your past is always in your present. And so it's affecting you. It's affecting what you think of as normal or healthy in you being a father to somebody else. So you're probably, uh, you know, not probably, you're certainly overcompensating or undercompensating hmm. for the wounds of your childhood. Yeah. Uh, it's affecting the way that you would interact with your uh, spouse, uh, where you would open up yourself emotionally or close yourself emotionally. It's affecting the level of your friendships. So you can say, I have all kinds of friendships. I, I bet you sushi they're not that deep hmm. or you're overly dependent on your friends. Yeah. Because a healthy relationship with your father and dealing with it, an unhealthy relationship with your father brings health into all those areas. So your past is never your past. It's always in your presence. So it's things like that, that on a, on a – you have been injected with a poison. You can live with that poison – and you can also get rid of that poison. You're just used to living with it, yeah. right? And and uh, getting rid of that poison can change your bitterness anger or it can change the depth and the health of the relationship. It's going to play out differently in all kinds of different people's lives. But an unwillingness to forgive is going to have results in in your life. So... On a very practical level, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's helpful for you. Any time that a parent becomes more healthy, it brings health to their children. Yeah. So I'm I'm a product of a father. My father was raised in a very dysfunctional home. My father uh, found Christ dealt with a lot of that dysfunction, but was in some ways dysfunctional himself, I am 10 degrees removed from that dysfunction. Yeah. So I cannot relate to, is, to the unhealth of my grandfather, my dad's dad. I can relate to my dad's health, but I'm are, are places of dysfunction, but I'm healthier than he was. Mm -hmm. So my kids then are 15 degrees removed. See how it works? Yep. So... It's not a passive thing, and uh, on a very practical, non-spiritual level, it's only going to help you, it's only going to free you, and it's only going to help you be healthier to the people around you. Yeah, that's really good. Um, <clears throat> My, I'll be honest. I hope our listeners are in the same boat. Like my mind is like moving a million miles per hour already in this conversation about why. Well, I mean, there's this person, and I, I want to help them. And you know, there's this person that maybe I haven't. Jeff, it's about time I forgive you for no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Jeff, there a lot of times I don't know that everybody is always being stubborn about not forgiving, at least alone. What do you think some of the barriers are that get in people's way from even being willing? To step forward to being forgiving. The, the biggest barrier is we can function in our dysfunction. Mm. So, you know, if, um, you, you know, uh, 
I just got glasses that my daughter-in-law picked them out. So if I look like I'm cool, it's because she's cool. They're clear, so you might not be able to see them on YouTube. That's right. They're, because they're that cool. So here's what's, <laughs> here's what's funny when you get glasses. I'm pretty sure it's a racket. Uh, but here's what's funny when you get glasses. When you start wearing glasses, you need to wear your glasses more and more. Hmm. And I got glasses because I was having – my eyes were blurry. And I was ha- having trouble – uh, seeing things. So I got glasses. When I got glasses, I could see. And I'm like, wow, I needed glasses. But now that I have glasses, my vision is worse without glasses than it ever was without glasses before I got glasses. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much so, sense. So <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's this cycle. I could I could function in my dysfunction. Mm. And when I found clarity I became less functional in my dysfunction. That's excellent, yeah. Does that make sense? So so that is the biggest barrier, is I can see without glasses. My, my eyes will water, it'll get blurry, I can't see as well as I used to, I get a headache. That's what caused me to realize like, oh, <laughs> I'm dysfunctional. I put my glasses on, I'm like, whoa, I was really dysfunctional. Yeah. And now I realize how dysfunctional I was in my dysfunction. And so I think the biggest reason is like we've learned to live with dad. That's yeah. uh everybody knows he's an idiot. Mm. Everybody knows he's got a temper. Um I've learned I've learned to live in a dysfunctional relationship. And that's what I'm saying like you can live with this poison in your system. It probably won't kill you. Mm. But the but when you get health you're like, oh, that's what a high... Literally, this happened to me the other day. I'm like, that's what a high-definition television looks like. <laughs> right? I, yeah. I never... I uh, Truly, I never thought they were that big of a deal. And I'm just like, oh, I was... It was my eyes. That's awesome. Right? So the the desire for health, the desire to be better... that, And this is part of where... When you cross over and think about this in terms of being a Christ follower, it's all practical. It's all kind of self-improvement. When you cross over and you're like, I want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to have 2020 vision with my relationships. That's a whole nother ballgame. Yeah. See, because when you want to be like Jesus, Jesus is our definition of health, so to say. And when you take our relationships and put it against being Christ-like, you're like, whoa, I am super duper blurry in, in, this, in this area. And my lack of forgiveness and my lack of pursuing that is actually me being un-Christ-like because Christ is forgiving and Christ pursues a healthy relationship with you and me. So... Having forgiveness for the Christian is not the achievement of forgiveness and pure health in a relationship. Forgiveness for the Christian is the achievement of pursuing another person the way that Christ pursues us. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a different thing and a different standard. And on the practical side, the kind of the non-believing side, we say, well, I'm a better person and I'm healthier on a Christian side, we would say, I'm actually loving the way that I've been loved, and I'm forgiving the way that I've been forgiven. Yeah. The win on the practical side is, if I get healthier, they get healthier. On the Christ-like side is, if I get healthier, I become more like Christ, and their unhealth is an opportunity for me to become even more like Christ. Wow. It's a, it's a different set of standards. <clears throat> so... I like this double-sided coin that you're walking down here, and I'm curious what you think um, some of the barriers then for a believer would be to to not do that. Because um, if if we're called to love like Christ, if if those things are happening, like, or maybe it's not even what's different, but what might be the danger of a believer who's saying, "I I refuse to walk down this path of forgiveness with someone else," like. Should they be concerned about anything? Or, sure. I mean, what, what what do you think is going on there? So th- this is what we'll do as a believer. I will forgive another person 
to the depth in which I believe God needs to forgive me. Mm. So my lack of forgiveness actually exposes my own self-righteousness. Wow. Okay? So so the if if I believe that I'm a good person and I don't hurt people and blah, 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 and like I just need my sins forgiven, but the degree to which I recognize the depth of my need for forgiveness is the degree to which I will give forgiveness to another person. Yeah, wow. So the hardest thing for a believer to get our head around is that my father who hurt me, I am him. <laughs> I am the same sinner. I hurt people in the same way. I abandon God. I use God. I treat God the way that my dad treated me. And Jesus, God, forgives me and pursues forgiveness in me. Therefore, for me to forgive as I have been forgiven is going to look like that in my dad's relationship, with my relationship with my dad. And, and Jesus does that without expectation of us perfectly returning his effort. Hmm. So we take God's forgiveness for granted every morning yeah. when we wake up. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we take grace for granted 24 hours a day, almost every moment of every day, mm-hmm. right? And so that's what, in this example, that's what the father will do as his son tries to pursue him. Yeah. The um, the other thing that I have rolling around in my head, um, Jeff, I'm thinking of this listener. I'm thinking of even a couple, couple scenarios in my life. You forgive... You know, you, you step in and you say, um, okay, Dad, I forgive you for this one thing or these 85 things or these a million things. Is this a one-and-done thing? Like no. now that I've forgiven him, like it's kind of over, and now any other bitterness that I still have swirling around in my bloodstream, I just have to get over it? Or how does that play out? So forgiveness is not a moment, and it's not a emotion. Hmm. Forgiveness is a habitual choice. Wow, yeah. So the way that I often say that is forgiveness is a habit, all right? So you're going to forgive the dad in this scenario. Uh, You're going to forgive him a thousand times a day. Mm. Even if he changes, you're going to do that. I I use this example in marriage a lot when there's an, an adultery, right? So... I'll have a couple come into my office. There's been an act of adultery. My first question to them is, you want to you want to be married or not? To to the person who was sinned against. You want to mar- stay married or not? If they say, uh, I want to stay married, I'll say, okay. I want you to know that you have a choice. You can blow this marriage up or you can pursue it. You want to pursue it? I want to pursue it. Okay, let me tell you the reality of this. He sinned against you. You're going to have to forgive him a thousand times a day, even if he never sins against you again and he is repentant as he can possibly be because you have a memory. Yeah. And you're going to feel that emotion and you're going to feel that betrayal and you're going to feel it in the little nuances of your life. You cannot forgive and forget, because you can't forget. You can forgive, you can't forget, right? Now, this is what's weird. Let's just say the husband committed adultery on the wife. I say that to the wife, and then I look at the husband, I say, this is what's weird. You're going to have to forgive her a thousand times a day, because mm. you're going to look at her and say, what else can I do? Why are you holding this over my head? How come you're being cold to me right now? And you're going to have to carry the burden of her struggle to forgive in a lot of the same ways that she's going to have to carry the burden of your struggle to forgive, Mm. right? Now, that is actually the foundation of every relationship. You know, you were joking about, Jeff, I forgive you, but we've been friends a long time. Oh, yeah. Like, you've, you've like, legitimately had to forgive me for something. Sure. I've had legitimately... 99% of the time, we don't even say that to each other. Right. Love each other. We're friends. Yep. We're just like, yeah, it's okay. I'm mm-hmm. gonna, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna carry that burden for you, yep. right? That is the essence of relationships because what human beings do the best and most consistently is sin against each other. Mm-hmm. It's our nature. 
what Christ does when he brings a super nature or the supernatural into our life is he allows us to be motivated to forgive as we have been forgiven, which is continually. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and that is what allows us. Can you imagine if Jesus cut us off the first time we sinned after we asked for the forgiveness of our sin? <laughs> we wouldn't get off of our knees. No, we would not. Right? From, yeah. from the repenting the first time. Yep. And so his forgiveness is a flow, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's a habit. It's a habitual choice that he has made. We call it grace. We call it mercy. We call it compassion. It's all forgiveness. It's all mixed into the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's actually how we live with each other. Yeah. It makes me think of, you know, there's this cliche of friendship out there that like, uh, and really even of some romantic relationships where, well, this person just accepts me for who I am. And what I, what it sounds like, at least in those human to human relationships, based on how you just described forgiveness, what they're longing for is I want someone that's willing to carry the burden of forgiving me on a regular basis right. because I know I'm not perfect. I don't I don't accept you for who you are. I choose to love you for who you are. Yeah. Right? Because who you are, I don't care how close you are, who you are eventually is going to hurt me. Yep. Because we sin against each other, mm-hmm. right? So the the covenant of marriage is in some ways, regardless of how much you hurt me, I'm going to choose to love you, forgive you. We're going to work this through. The essence of healthy relationship is when I say you hurt me, you say, oh, forgive me, man. I didn't know. I didn't understand. Or you know what? I was a jerk, right? So you're accepting that you hurt me. Mm-hmm. Ask it. What we all long for is other people to ask forgiveness from us. Right, right. Right? Right. Now, you run back to the scenario of our listener, it sounds like dad never did that. And he may be clueless. He may be uh, out of his mind, maybe an alcoholic, drug addict. He may may be unaware. Or he may not give a rip. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with me forgiving him. Right. Right. See, it... In an ideal setting, he comes to Jesus, he knocks on his son's door, he says, I realize I caused all this pain in your life. I am so deeply grieved by that. Mm-hmm. Would you forget? The healing that that would bring. Oh my gosh. Because that son, this, this is back to the like, it, you live in a not, that son wants to hear that from his father. He's learned to live without it. Yep. But it's what he longs for. Yeah. Right, my goodness. Those those ideal situations don't play out, and that's why when when if this father passes away mm-hmm. and never asks for forgiveness, that son now is going to have to live with no closure. He's going to have to forgive his dad the rest of his life. Yep, because that that void is there, and it should not have been there. His dad should have loved him, should have sacrificed for him, should have. I find um, one of the most helpful things for me when I find myself in that scenario is God give me a heart for that person that has hurt me in the same way, Jesus, that you have a heart for them. That's right. Because when my heart breaks for them, not that it always washes away and I never think about it again like you've been saying, but it helps me forgive. It it's it, it it almost like it opens the door for God to empower me to have what I need to forgive Him, and it, but if I'm refusing to see their broken humanity, their issues, their darkness, or even their ignorance, then that forgiveness is willpower only, and that's why it's so hard to find sometimes. I, and I'm not sure. I don't think you can willpower forgiveness. Nope. I I I, I think. It, Ultimately, it's a it's a spiritual act of healing in somebody's heart mm-hmm. because and it it's rooted in the depth of which you understand your need for God's forgiveness in your life. Yep, so good. Well, I hope uh, that our listener who asked this question that this is uh, somewhat healing for them and hopefully not only gives them some practical handles to move forward, uh, but also um, some spiritual footing uh, to kind of explore more and more what God wants to do in their heart and the healing that can come from that alone. 
for the rest of us, uh, forgiveness is a conversation we could probably address every day. And so I hope this was helpful for you. Um, for all of us, if you have questions like this that you would like addressed on our podcast, you can always do that by going to bath.gracechurches.org slash mixed messages. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get to those things that are messing with our heads uh, and yours alike. Um, if you'd like to uh, take any unique next steps in your faith, you can always reach out and let us know. And if you like what you're hearing, you can always subscribe, follow, rate, and review our podcast. We'd love more and more people to be helped by this. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you join us on the weekend here in person, or you can always do so online if you're out of the area. Well, thanks so much for jumping uh, jumping in with us today as we continue to seek God's voice through all the mixed messages around us. See you next time.